So in the previous part, we talked about variables. Now in this part, we'll, I'll be introducing you to all of this, um, to all to the explanation of all of these uh, data types. Now, when you want to use these data types, we need to be absolutely be sure how how much space they can retain. How much? Uh, what is the limit of the numbers, or what is the range of the numbers, or what is how much data can each of this um, data type store? We can't just use one uh, of the uh, one of the data types, one of the data types, and we uh, just randomly store anything. We can't do that. So to understand them more closely, we we can break them down. There are, I guess, thirteen of them, thirteen data types in here in total. We can classify them into four. Um, four major categories so I've actually talked about this but I'm actually repeating this so that we can understand more clearly uh, how to classify them now the first thing that we'll be talking about is integral data type the first major um, data types are integral or the first major uh, four uh, categories for all classifying all of these 13 uh, data types are uh, the integral then the floating point number then the decimal and the boolean type now the first we'll be talking about the first uh, um, first category in this uh, section in this part the first category which is called the integral part has nine data types nine data types out of this 13 it classifies nine of them out of all of these 13 data types so what are those nine uh, data types the first one that we'll be looking at is the integer or the int or int uh, data type in c sharp then comes the uint or unsigned int then comes the um, short or the unsigned short then we have the um, byte I guess yep the byte and the signed byte and uh, lastly we'll be looking at uh, car, uh, char or car whatever you call it this is the character data type so this char all of this um, nine of them will be talking about all these nine of them and how they differ and why they differ in their memory allocation and what is the actual meaning of signed and unsigned we'll be also looking into that so basically when we talk about integers let's uh, keep our knowledge fresh for uh, let's review the concept of integer once more so when we talk about integers integers are actually data types that can hold whole numbers so i shall repeat that integers are data types that can hold whole numbers so whole numbers are numbers that do not have a, a value after a decimal point so it does not hold a value after a decimal point and it can be negative or it can also be positive but it can't be fraction or it cannot be a decimal number so to store decimal numbers we'll be looking into how to store decimal numbers we'll be talking about uh, storing decimal in mm, double when you talk about double so we'll, we'll, we won't be looking at that uh, for now but we'll be focusing mostly on integer data types so the integer data types the first one that we're looking into is the int this int has a memory allocation of four bytes now what does this four bytes mean so we learned that the standard unit for measuring or the most um, easiest way of measuring you can say that but perhaps it's, it's the standard measurement or the standard unit for measuring um, memory is the bytes but like meter which can be broken down meter is actually a standard unit in physics for uh, measuring distances now when we want to uh, measure smaller distances like the length of uh, a table maybe or the or a length of a pencil maybe or a length of a we talked about a pen maybe so we want we don't want a meter because a meter is too long when we want to measure a smaller distance we need a smaller um, measuring unit now we can use a centimeter for that case so what we are doing in here is that we are actually breaking down the 
standard unit of meter into centimeter in here similarly in memory allocation when you talk about bytes it just gives us a standard unit but bytes can also be broken down into smaller units which are called bits b i t s bit bits so one byte is actually equals to 8 bits like one meter is equals to 100 centimeter in memory allocation one byte as i repeat one byte is equals to 8 bits now when we talk about 8 bits if we convert that 8 bits into 4 bytes we have 32 bits so in um in an integer data type we have got 32 bits of space in our memory to store our number but that doesn't give us any uh, uh, what can I say any picture of how many numbers we can store it has a limit but in uh, so in integer data type we can actually um, store around uh, I guess um, that will be minus 2 billion around uh, 2 billion 147 million um, uh, the range is actually minus 2 billion 147 million uh, to 200 and um, uh, 200 2 billion 147 million and that's the range of numbers that you can store inside the integer data type but if you so basically what we have got in here is that you can store any number which is in between the range of minus 2 billion and plus 2 billion it needs to be your number needs to be in between this when you when you want to store a number inside using this integer data type inside your memory but remember that this integer data type can actually store an integer of both positive and negative so if we want to store a negative number we can do that and if we want to store a positive number we can also do that but there is a small um, shortcoming of using this integer data type. Suppose you want to store a number that's 3 billion. You can't do that because your range is in between minus 2 billion to two bi positive uh, plus 2 billion. So if you want to store a number that's 3 billion, you don't have that space. So in integer data type, what happens is that you, you, you might even remember that we talked about it has uh, four bytes so it has got 32 bits in the simplest term so when we want to store any uh, number that has got a sign which means it has got either positive or negative it actually takes away one bit from that 32 bit so when it takes away one bit from the 32 bit we have got only 31 bit of number left for our storage space and that one bit is actually used to store either positive or negative so that's why the range is actually smaller but when it comes to the point of using uint or unsigned int unsigned int is a data type that can only store positive numbers or positive integer numbers so you must remember that unsigned always refers to positive uh, data types so in here also u long means positive long numbers or a positive uh, yeah positive long numbers u short means positive short numbers we'll be talking about that in a while but let's finish up with this unsigned integer so when we want to use all of these 32 bits of data in our um, for our number for storing our number suppose we want to store that 3 billion the number 3 billion inside our integer data type we can use this u int or unsigned int in our c sharp programming now uh, if we want to use that u int we have got um, we can actually store a number that's bigger than 4 billion perhaps I guess that's 4 billion 294 million uh, I guess that's uh, it's a huge number I don't remember the exact one but you can actually uh, store around 4.2 billion up to four up to a number of 4.2 billion so remember that I'm not using any negative number I'm not using a range that's from negative to positive because unsigned always means positive 
So when we want to, if we if we want to store that number of three billion, I, it, so positive three billion, we can use that. So because we are not storing any signs, we are not actually utilizing that one bit, and hence we have got 